uterus uh, that might affect the uterus but uh, really I, I will stress in this lecture on the most important and the most commonly seen in our clinical practice these includes بالمناسبة, المحاضرة, المحاضرة, بال, uh, these includes endometrial polyps, Asherman syndrome, adenomyosis, and uterine fibrils. Uh, these uh, four uh, disorders are usually and seen in our uh, clinical practice. Therefore, I will stress on uh, each of them separately, and I will present some of the most important few details about each one. Starting from the material polyps, as you see in this picture, it is a discrete out growth of the endometrium that is attached by a pedicle to the endometrium. And this pedicle may be a little bit elongated, in which it is called a pedunculated polyps, or it may be just a flush with the endometrium, in which it is uh, named as sessile polyps. Uh, the histological uh, uh, makeup of this endometrial poly poly polypoid tissue is similar to that of the endometrium, that is to say, it does contain endometrial glands and citroma as well as blood vessels, but in varying proportions. But they differ from the normal endometrial tissue by being insensitive and not responsive to cyclical hormonal changes. Therefore, they are not shed during menstruation. The endometrium usually sheds during the time of mens, during the time of blood loss, menstrual flow, but uh, because these uh, polypoi or polyps and the material polyps are uh, not responsive to these hormonal changes, they are not shed. They can be single or multiple, as you see from this picture. Here the uterus is affected or uh, there are two polyps included in this picture, and, or it may be a single one. And uh, their size varies between uh, that from about 0.4 or 0.5 centimeter up to 4 centimeter in diameter. Therefore, they differ in their size uh, uh, greatly. And uh, they may be solitary, as I said, or multiple. How they are diagnosed, yani how the diagnosis of an endometrial polyp is established. Uh, as you can imagine that by doing a blind endometrial sampling, they may be frequently missed yani by, uh, by performing dilation of the cervix and curating the endometrial or by sponging the endometrial cavity. Uh, endometrial tissue uh, frequently will be missed and uh, undetected. But the more sensitive technique in diagnosing the polyps, of course, by the use of uterine imaging and especially with the use of an ultrasound machine, uh, particularly with a transvaginal approach, transvaginal scanning, because the pelvic organs are more clear and can be uh, uh, accurately and clearly visualized with the use of a transvaginal ultrasound uh, rather than the abdominal and pelvic ultrasound imaging. And of course, by the use of saline as a distension medium, as you uh, see in this lecture. Uh, this will clearly demarcate the border of the polyp. Therefore, uh, the use of a saline, uh, trans-saline uh, sonography will uh, markedly in increase the diagnostic performance. Uh, the third way in diagnosing the polyp that will provide an opportunity for concurrent removal as well is the hysteroscope, we have the use of a hysteroscope. Hysteroscope from its name, it means an endoscope of the inside to, uh, that, that will visualize the inside of the uterine cavity, the inside of the uterus. So uh, this picture, as you see, that the polyps looks very uh, obviously, and uh, when uh, it can, at the same time it can be removed uh, by uh, doing this hysteroscope, that is to say, uh, rather than applying the therapeutic, the diagnostic hysteroscopy, a therapeutic hysteroscopy can be 
uh, done at the same session. How these polyps or uh, what is the preferred treatment of an endometrial polyp when it is detected? Here, the treatment can be uh, divided according to the to the age of the woman. So, in general, if the woman is aged less than 40 years of old, here. Uh, you have to know that the polyps or the endometrial polyps are unlikely to be of any significance. And the removal here is mandatory only if they are symptomatic and the symptoms persist for at least three months or more. So, if the woman presents with symptomatic endometrial polyps, they should be considered for removal. And, uh, the, of course, the removal can be done under by the hysteroscope uh, yeah, therapy, operative hysteroscopy, as I said. The symptoms here will be an intermenstrual bleeding. That is to say, the woman reports a spotting in between the men's. The methyl matarfon, المفروض in a regular menstrual cycle, the bleeding is just confined to the days of the loss. That is to say, the three up to seven days of the men's. But the woman said that uh, doctor, I'm, I have I have a small spotting uh, outside the time of the real months. So, in this setting, we have to think about the possibility of uh, the presence of a polyps, and uh, if uh, their presence is confirmed and the symptoms persist for three months or more, the polyps is uh, better to, to be uh, excised, removed. For those women above the age of 40, but is still pre-menopausal, pre yani below the age of 50, here, uh, removal of the polyps should be considered for, uh, should be considered. Why? Because the risk of hyperplasia increases with increasing maternal age. Therefore, uh, removal here is uh, uh, important and it is an, a, a better option than a conservative management. And uh, you have to know that the hyperplasia here may be confined to the poly to the uh, to the endometrial polyp tissue itself. Removal uh, can be done either in an outpatient setting, that is to say, there is no need for hospitalization and admission to the hospital, because it can be done out under local anesthesia. Uh, as I said, via yeah, an operative hysteroscope. What about a woman who are postmenopausal and discovered to have an endometrial polyps? Here it is mandatory to remove these polyps. Why? Because the risk of hyperplasia and malignancy significantly increase about uh, the age of 50 or in a postmenopausal uh, age group. Especially in those women who are on tamoxifen, kept on tamoxifen treatment for breast cancer. Because this treatment causes endometrial hyperplasia. And uh, at the same time, there will be an increase in the risk of malignancy. As you know, tamoxifen is given uh, post-mastectomy uh, in women with breast cancer and those who are hormone uh, sensitive to uh, uh, estrogen. As well, uh, poly the polyps can be seen in women who are kept on hormone replacement therapy. Uh, therefore, these medications, they are given to a woman who are postmenopausal. They should be frequently followed up for the possibility of, of uh, development of endometrial polyps. Therefore, here removal is mandatory to exclude the remote possibility of malignancy. لحد الآن افتهمتوا عن الاندومتريال polyps. أكو أحد عنده سؤال؟ أنا وراكم أسسمنت ترى بالشات وياي أنتو؟ بس أحد يجاوب؟ دكتورة وياك موجودين أريد دكتورة وياك عد أكو أحد عنده سؤال عن الاندومتريال بولبس؟ واضحة الأمور كانت؟ اي نعم دكتورة واضحة اوكي هسه نجي على السكند امبورتنت بيناين كونديشن ذات كان بي سين ان اور كلينيكال براكتس ذات از نيمد اور تيرمد از اشورمان سندروم 
from this picture, you uh, can see that the uh, uterus with the Escherman syndrome uh, differ from the uterus of healthy uterus and that there is a fibrosis and adhesion in the endometrial cavity. This results from an excessive curation of the endometrial cavity for a retained product of conception following an incomplete abortion, incomplete miscarriage, or as in following a secondary postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, to remove or retain the product or retain the placental tissue. So by excessively curating the endometrial cavity, there will be damage to the thick basal layer of the endometrium. And all of you know that this layer is very important in uh, providing normal regeneration of a healthy endometrial tissue following uh, shedding of the endometrium. Therefore, the presentation will be absent or reduced menstrual flow. It can be it is not only occurred following excessive curation of the endometrial cavity. There is another infective cause uh, that you have to think about is the tuberculosis of the endometrial of the, of the genital tract, especially of the uterine cavity. Though it is a rare cause, now can you have to uh, think about this possibility, a rare possibility as well. Therefore, the treatment here is mainly preventive. Uh, that is to say by avoiding the over or excessive curation of the endometrial cavity, you know, of the uh, uterine cavity following evacuation of a retained, or during evacuation of a retained product of conception. Otherwise, the treatment option available here is just the lice of intrauterine adhesions via the hysteroscope, uh, uh, hysteroscopic method. And we another option, no we do a division of the adhesion, basal endometrium already destroyed and distracted. The third important benign condition affecting the uterus is the adenomyosis. Adenomyosis, as you see in this picture, is a benign invasion of the endometrium into the myometrial tissue. So here, an endometrial gland and its trauma must be present within the myometrium in order to diagnose uh, the presence or absence of adenomyosis. And uh, as you see in this picture, that adenomyosis leads to significant uterine en enlargement. Uh, the chiffon, the uterus with adenomyosis, is larger than a normal healthy uh, uterus. This can be single, yani there is a focal adenomyotic deposits, but it is more frequently diffused, okay? What about the presentation here? Yani what will be the chief complaint for the woman or what uh, will be the symptoms uh, in a woman with adenomyosis? Of course, a menstrual symptom is uh, the main presenting complaint in the form of heavy menstrual bleeding, that is to say, menorrhagia. At the same time, she may suffer from this menorrhea that will be significant. And you should know there uh, will be pain during the mens, secondary dysmenorrhea. Uh, you have to know that this condition is characteristic of the fifth decade of life. And the woman uh, develop adenomyosis after the age of 40 with the age of 45 years being the commonest age of representation. It will come Victoria, Victoria, I am heavy bleeding and a painful mens, uh, and she is above the age of 40. You have to uh, think about uh, the presence of adenomyosis. It is very rare in nulliparous women. It is a disease of multiparous women, those who have a pre previous pregnancy. As well, they, it has been found that smoking 
is protective against the development of adenomyosis. That is to say, it is seen less frequently in, uh, in those who smoke. What about the diagnosis? The definitive diagnosis will be by histological examination of the uterus after hysterectomy. There should be an endometrial gland and a citroma present within the myometrial tissue in order to establish the, the diagnosis. Therefore, the definitive diagnosis is made uh, after histological examination of a uterus following hysterectomy. But the uh, imaging techniques via the ultrasound or MRI, of course, can uh, the diagnosis can be reached. And uh, as you know, that the magnetic resonance imaging, of course, is more accurate than the ultrasound uh, technique in diagnosing any tissue abnormality. For the treatment, how these women can be treated? يعني تخيلوا إنه المرة عمرها أربعين سنة وجت عند heavy bleeding عند dysmenorrhea. So the purpose here, إحنا هدفنا إنه نقلل ال bleeding and relieve the symptoms and here this menorrhea. Here we have to start by the medical options and these includes an antifibrinolytics, uh, for example, tranexamic acid and cyclocapron, or a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or the use of an uh, oral combined oral contraceptive pill, or high dose progestins. As well, the use of marina, which is a levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system, may be as effective for the reduction of uterine volume and relief of symptoms. Up to one year. After after one year, the efficacy will decline. Uh, the last treatment option for the adenomyosis is by, of course, surgically excising the uterus. And uh, it is obviously provide will provide permanent cure for for the problem. Okay, it comes to all on adenomyosis or on Escherman syndrome. Hmm. La doctor, what? Okay. Let's go and go to the commonest. Benign uh, tumor affecting the female genital tract. Samin benign fibroids. Ako ahadi that he will show the most palah and yet lock all the fibroids. Bill Bill Arabic. Uterine lyomat, myomata, or fibroids. Samin will act the leafy. أي دكتور؟ نعم. شنو هذا الفايبرويز؟ مثل ما قلنا، it is the most common benign tumors of the female genital tract. From which it does arise from a neoplastic transformation of a single smooth muscle cell. إذا هو شنو؟ هو it is a benign tumor of smooth muscle cells of the uterus. How it does grossly appear, or what is the gross appearance of these fibroids? مثل ما شوفون. It is a well circumscribed, uh, firm, nearly round tumors that appears white rolled on a cast section. It varies in its size greatly, from very small to a large, huge fibroids. Adatin, it looks paler than the adjacent normal myometrial tissue. Therefore, it will be very well demarcated from the adjacent normal myometrial tissue. You have to know that the growth of, that the growth of these fibroids is dependent on ovarian steroid hormones. What is معناته وجود ال ال الفايبرويدز متعلق بيا ايج جروب اوف ذا وومن هاي بس بدي اعرف انتوا وياي ولا لا لان هي حقيقه انا اسئله فيري سمبل يعني دكتوره يعني ايج جروب 
متعلق بال premenopausal women يعني any woman who is menstruating at risk of fibroid development okay لذلك راح يعني بديهيا تتخيلون انه once the ovarian hormones cease or ovarian function cease after the age of 50 or at the menopausal age group the enlargement of the fibroid or the growth of the fibroids will be stopped as well okay then what about histo histologically what uh, how from which these fibroids that is composed or what is the histological appearance of these fibroids It is composed of varying proportions of a spindle, the smooth muscle cells, and fibroblast. With the shufun, with the other picture, it varies greatly in size. They can be single, يعني المريضة عندها just one single fibroid, لكن more frequently multiple. What about the classification? And these are classified according to their location. With the shufun in this figure. إلى شنو؟ The following هذا السهم واضح عندكم بده يتحرك بالبيكتشر مو صحيح؟ نعم دكتور نعم هذا الفايبرويدز يقسم according to their locations إلى subamucosal مثل ما تشوفون هذا يكون adjusting to and bulging into the endometrial cavity هذا هو الكافيتي وهذا هو السبميكوزال فايبرويد هذا واحد أو قد يكون intramural هذا يكون centrally تقريبا located within the myometrium هذا هو intramural هذا هو myometrial tissue أو قد يكون subserosal يعني شنو؟ يعني near the outer border of the myometrium below the serosal layer هذا هو subserosal أو قد يكون pedunculated يعني attached to the uterus by a pedicle, narrow pedicle, مثل ما نشوفوها ضيقة, that contains blood vessels. كذلك هذا هم يسمو pedunculated, لكن هو position ما تا intracavitary. أو قد يكون ما موجود بهاي الفيكتور أو هذا الفيكتور قد يكون cervical, يعني شنو? يعني موجود arising from the cervix here. أو قد يكون parasitic. Parasitic يعني شنو? يعني it is not attached to the, to the uterus. لكن present عادة outside the uterus especially within the leaves of the broad ligament مثل ما تعرفون اليوترس يعني عند اكو broad ligaments to the right and left فنشوف اكو fibroids within the broad ligament لكن not attached to the uterus and it, here it is thought that it does arise from an embryonal remnants okay بس عرفتوا لي classification نجي على الـ incidence and risk factors. How frequent a fibroid or a uterine leiomyomata can be seen in a woman during their reproductive life? It has been found that 20 up to 30 percent of women, of women during their reproductive life, found to have uterine fibroids. إذا شفتوا الـ incidence إيش قد عالي؟ 30 بالمئة يوصل. زين. هل أكو risk factors؟ affects the uh, development of fibroids and will come now what the men are racial differences shlon it has been shown that there is an increase significant increase in the incidence in those who are afro-caribbean by up to nine folds and two to up to nine folds they have a greater risk of fibroid development but reproductive factors شافوا إنه parity is a protective against the development of uterine fibroid. معناته شنو؟ Who have no previous delivery or no previous pregnancy. parity إحنا نقول معناته those above طبعا تعرفون above the age of 24 we gestation يعني قبل ال 24 أسبوع هذا نعتبره miscarriage مو para. فإذا With increasing parity, and increasing deliveries and the pregnancies above the age of 24, there will be a reduction in the risk of fibroid development. زين. معناته المرأة اللي تبقى بلا زواج هذه at increased risk of fibroid development لو ريسك بيها يقل. دكتور تزداد الريسك. آه كذلك those اللي يبتلون بالبرايمري انفرتوليتي او عندهم انفرتوليتي. 
فإذا البارتي is protective. زين. What about the environmental factors? It has been shown that smoking reduces the risk of fibroid development. زين. أحد يقول ليش لون وليش؟ ومثل ما قلنا the smoking is protective against شنو بعد؟ the benign disorder الثاني اللي حكيته ببداية المحاضرة. طبعاً أنا ما داش أشجعكم على السموكينج لكن هي اتزافات اللي لازم تعرفوها. أمم. كرا هو السموكينج. لا مو الأشر ما سندرم معناته تموية. لا 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 الأدينة ما يوصل. الأدينة ما يوصل صح لا لا زين إذا السموكينج is protective شلون ليش؟ يعني بشكل عام السموكينج يؤدي إلى إلى reduction of ovarian function، أوكي؟ okay. فيؤدي إلى low estrogen uh, hormone or level in the, in the circulation. لذلك يعني من خلال هذا الميكانيزم ممكن يؤدي إلى reduction in adenomyosis as well as fibroid development. And both of these conditions are related to, to the cyclical hormonal changes. زين. What about obesity? Is obesity uh, a risk factor for the development of fibroid? Nah. So then, well, BMI is very important. يعني obesity, if it is a, that's a present, I will, will increase the risk of fibroid development. كذلك ال positive family history. So then, any woman with a, a mother or a sister affected with fibroids, multiple. To say, doctor, I am a mother. So I have a lot of pain on my arm. So I have a lot of pain on my arm. Or my sister. So even uh, family history is important as well and considered a risk factor. It's something important that are uh, related to the fibroids, the degeneration. Yeah, the conditions. Now, tell me. دكتورة هو ال ال pregnancy. يعني كل ال pregnancy هو protective لو ال ال miscarriage. يعني ما له دور. حسب الدراسات. Party. بالضبط احسنتي البارتي هي البروتكتيف يعني البريجنسي از اباوت ذا ايج اوف بريجنسي يعني بارتي انكريزنج بارتي الترايلز والكنترول ترايلز والستاديز شافت انه البارتي يعني البريجنسي ذات اكستنس اباوت ذا ايج اوف 24 از بروتكتيف يعني كل ما يزيد عدد الاحبالات فوق ال 24 هي اللي راح تكون بروتكتيف اجينست ديفلوبمنت اوف فايبرز Okay, let's look at the forms or the conditions that is important and might affect a fibroid. اللي هي نسميها degeneration. من اسمها degeneration يعني تحلل. زين. What are the kinds أو تحول? What are what are the kinds of degenerations that can be seen in a fibroid? اللي هي شنو؟ the most important هاي خلوها ببالكم، عندنا red degeneration، عندنا ال high line degeneration، وعندنا cystic degeneration، وكذلك هسه راح تعرفون اكو عندنا ال calcification، وكذلك ممكن يصير عندها sarcomatous or malignant degeneration ذو غير. نبدي بال red degeneration. هذا حقيقة من اسمه red degeneration، هذا شنو؟ This condition arises from an acute or following an acute disruption of the blood supply to the fibroid. زين إحنا شو وقت يصير عندنا acute disruption؟ إنه عادة أكو blood supply to the fibroid. This happens usually during the period of active growth of the fibroid. شو وقت هذا يصير ال active growth؟ عادة أثناء الحمل. Especially during the mid-second trimester of a pregnancy. طبعا الفايبرويد تعرفون انه اثناء الحمل هو اليوترس كله will be enlarged. والفايبرويد كذلك كجزء من اليوترس كذلك it will be enlarged. ف ف when it outgrows its blood supply rapidly, there will be a red degeneration of this fibroid. Here the presentation will be Sudden onset of pain with localized tenderness to an area of the uterus. Doctor, I tell you, doctor, I'm injured. 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 I'
بهذا المكان تحدد بإيدها اللي هو راح يكون confined to the site of the underlying thyroid as well she will have a mild pyrexia she will develop mild pyrexia and on investigation reveal the presence of leukocytosis يعني white piece can be elevated فهذه الحالة named as red degeneration of a uterine thyroid هنا التريتمنت عادة هي conservative يعني شنو symptomatic relief يعني شنو ننطيها انالجيزيا ننطيها انتي بايرتيك وهكذا ليش لانه uh, it typically resolves over a few days يعني it is self limiting what about the other kinds of degeneration of uterine fibroids احنا قلنا واحدة من عندها هو الريد ديجنريشن الثاني هو الهايلاين ديجنريشن هذا شو وقت يصير It does happen when the fibroids gradually outgrows its blood supply. When we على كلمة gradually, يعني مو suddenly, مو acute disruption of the blood supply. معناته إحنا إن the growth they يكون slowly, more rapidly. And here, طبعا if it does outgrows its blood supply gradually, here the degeneration will be uh, referred to as hyaline. يعني تكون مثل ال الماتيريال مثل الهيلامية تصير هذا الـ degeneration may progress to central necrosis leaving cystic spaces at the center يعني راح تترك فراغات تجويف داخل الفايبرويد and here uh, the condition will be termed as cystic degeneration فهذا عرفنا الـ third uh, type of degeneration that might affect the fibroid أما الكالسيفيكيشن أوف الفايبرويد هذا شو وقت نشوفه؟ عادة إلى بوست مينابوزال وومن يعني تجي المريضة عمرها ستين سنة مثلا أو عليها سبعين أو أقل أو أكثر نشوف عندها بالألترا ساوند فد هايلي إيكوجينيك ماتيريال إنسايد الفايبرويد اللي هي كورسبوندز تو ذا بريزنس أوف كالسيفيكيشن طبعا ممكن المريضة تجي ديسكفر إنسيدنتالي أو إكسيدنتالي تو هاف الفايبرويد تقول دكتورة هل هذا بخطورة أنه يتحول إلى مرض خبيث؟ إحنا شو نجاوبها؟ نقولها yes it does though rarely. إيش قد ال incidence of malignant or sarcomatous degeneration or transformation؟ هي واحد بالميتين or less يعني point five percent. فهذا هو الريسك اللي لازم تعرفه المريضة. How about the clinical features of uterine fibroids؟ هي أن تتخيلوا هي ماس أو ماسز موجودة داخل اليوترس either or it يعني uh, most commonly or the vast majority of patients they are asymptomatic المريضة ما حاسة بيها مثلا هي اللي تقول أنا قاعد شيك بالصدفة ultrasound routine checking for any something else for example a renal complaint or, or abdominal something يعني complaint or just check up and found to have uh, uterine fibroids incidentally or coincidentally or she might have a firm mass that is very evident or very obvious on abdominal examination of the of the of, of her of uh, uh, of the patient rahan shuf innahu a firm mass arising from the pelvis wabha wa chibira zin Or she might develop menstrual upset, for example, menorrhagia, يعني heavy blood loss at the time of the menses. خاصة وهي نوع من أنواع الفايبرويدز. هل هو السابسيروزال أو السيرفايكال؟ إيش تتخيلوا؟ ويا السابميوكوزال هاي واحدة كذلك ويا الانتراميورال. زين. بعد ويا الأذر بالنسبة أبسط أو symptoms might be the the dyspnea. فإذا ممكن تيجي عندها pain during the menses ممكن يجي تيجي عندها presented with heavy menses. The fourth possible feature will be abdominal discomfort or a sensation of pelvic pressure. تقول دكتورة أنا عندي ثقل or back pain عندي ثقل بالحضماتي أو عندي ألم بظهري. فهاي كلها can be a features of uh, fibroid presence. As well, the abdomen might be distended. يعني تجي المريضة شو تقول لكم؟ تقول دكتور أقولها زين أنتي ما منتبهة أنه بطنك شبيرة تقولي دكتورة عبالي كرش 
في حين هو من نفحص هي هي الثن هي مبينة ثن من أطرافها لكن هو الأبدومن is the standard زين ال other representations include urinary symptoms يعني شنو؟ يعني fibroids إذا هو large أو uterine uterus is enlarged and the pressing on the dam of the bladder نتوقع أنه ال capacity of the bladder will be reduced لذلك هذا يؤدي إلى frequent menstruation frequent urination أو قد تب يعني قد ال presentation تكون بالعكس difficulty in menstruation تقول دكتورة أنا بصعوبة أفرغ المثانة مالتي هاي الحالة شو وقت نشوفها؟ نشوفها خاصة in a woman with cervical fibroid يعني ال fibroid present in the cervix ليش؟ لأن هذا will press on the uh, the cervical zycoerythral junction the zycoerythral junction لذلك يؤدي إلى uh, difficult menstruation كذلك ال presentation might be uh, bowel related for example constipation or it might be a reproductive uh, factors or presentation or dysfunction شلون راح يأثر على fertility in <coughs> or على ال reproductive uh, performance بالطرق الآتية يا أما يؤدي إلى sub fertility وبديهية الشغلة يعني شو وقت الفايبرويد can impair fertilization. أولا من located near the fallopian tubes. يعني قريب من الأنابيب. ليش؟ لأن this might lead to mechanical distortion or occlusion of the fallopian tubes. هذا رقم واحد. Or if it does present in the endometrial cavity. يعني submucosal, sorry. If it's bulging in the endometrial cavity. And if it is of large size, that leads to significant or and growth distortion of this cavity, this will prevent implantation of a fertilized ovum. هذا الميكانيزم الثاني. زين. بعد شنو ممكن presentation of a fibroid from the reproductive view? إنه the presence of a fibroid will lead to an abnormal lie late in a pregnancy. يعني المرأة حبلت ما عندها مشكلة بالفرتيلتي. يعني for example, the fibroid وين موجود? بالسيرفيكس أو يعني بالإنتراميورال أو سابسيروزال أو in the lower uterine segment لكن إذا الفايبرويد موجود in the lower uterine segment يعني if it is located uh, below in the if it is cervical one or large fibroid in the, in the lower uterine segment this will lead to an abnormal lie in late pregnancy لأن مثل ما تعرفون normally the lie should be longitudinal لكن وجود هذا الفايبرويد يؤدي إلى transverse lie for example or oblique lie زين واحد يقول لي وإذا خلي نام الطفل بأي وضعية هي تعجبة مثلا احنا نقول لكم هذا يؤدي إلى شنو ال abnormal lie يزيد ال risk of شنو أو ال incidence of شنو cesarean مو والله وال cesarean section مثل ال vaginal delivery طبعا لا لأنه any major surgery is associated with an increased morbidity and mortality because of the anesthetic complications and procedure-related complications. حارقم اثنين. بعد in which way a fibroid might affect the reproductive performance? A woman with uterine fibroids is at risk of شنو of postpartum hemorrhage. ليش؟ لأن يعني أنتوا تخيلوا أنه the presence of fibroids within the uterus will make the uterus شنو inefficient in its contraction. So a fibroid uterus will contract less efficiently than a uterus without a fibroid. لذلك يخليها عرضة إلى أنه تكون at more or at increased risk of primary postpartum hemorrhage. محاضرة الـ PPH أنتم ماخذيها أعتقد بالكورس الأول أو الرابع مو صحيح؟ فإذا واحدة من الريسك فاكتورز فور برايمري بوست بارتم هيموريج يعني بليدينغ ويذن ذا فيرست 24 أورز فولوينغ ذا ديليفري إز ذا بريزنس أوف الفايبرويدز. هاو إت إز دايجنوزد؟ هاو أ فايبرويد؟ إذا أنتم هاي بديهية الشغلة، شلون نشخص أ ومان ويذ يوتيراين فايبرويد؟ يعني شلون نشخص the presence of a fibroid in the uterus هي ماس موجودة بالرحم قبل ال ultrasound إذا إحنا حسينا اكو firm mass on abdominal examination وعدها heavy mass 
مثلا عندها مينوريجيا عندها ديسمينوريا راسا نشك انه عندها شنو انه عندها فايبرز لذلك often the clinical features alone will be sufficient to establish the diagnosis هذا رقم واحد طبعا we have to confirm the diagnosis via an imaging technique واللي هي readily available will cost effective هي الالترسونوغرافي الالترسون خاصة يا الالترسون هل هو الابدومينال لو الترانسفاجينال طبعا الترانسفاجينال هاي قدامكم موجودة العبارة او المعلومة لكن في حالة ال enlarged fibroids يعني أكثر من عشر سنتيمات السايز مالته طبعا نحتاج إلى abdominal ultrasound لأنه مرات نشوف ال fibroids واصل إلى level of the umbilicus or even above of the umbilicus واصل إلى the sternum بالنسبة لthose who are ignoring their health يعني ما يسوون فيلو أب كذلك ال abdominal ultrasound here will be of benefit in excluding a hydronephrosis that may be, may be present from Uh, pressure effect of the fibroid on the ureters. So then, the advantage of an abdominal ultrasound here is to exclude hydronephrosis as well. Uh, يعني, uh, يعني, uh, apart from detecting a very huge fibroids. كذلك الـ MRI طبعا it is uh, it is not cost effective لكن it might be beneficial in providing excellent visualization of the ureters and ovaries. لذلك مرات الكلينيشن أو الألترسونوغرافيست يتوهم هي ovarian mass يصورها it is a uterine mass or a fibroid rising from the uterus. فهنا أنا راح يكون ال 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 definitive definitive diagnostic way in distinguishing between an ovarian mass and a fibroid will be the magnetic resonance imaging. ها هي هاي هذا ال view. شنو هذا الفيو؟ أحد يقدر يقول لي هذا شنو؟ هذا ترانز أن ألترا ساوند فيو ترانز فاجينال بروب يعني إتز ترانز فاجينال ألترا ساوند فيجر تشوفون إنه الفايبرويد هذا حسب اللوكيشن مالته شنو التايب؟ وات إز ذا تايب أوف ذيس فايبرويد؟ تراميورا؟ لا مو تراميورا تشوفه قريب على الأوتر بوردر أوف ذا of the uterus. شو نسميه هذا؟ سبسيروزل. أحسن سبسيروزل، أوكي. What about the treatment؟ طبعاً if it is discovered accidentally يعني تجي المريضة تقول أنا دكتورة سويت السونار باي ذا واي لقيت عندي هذا الفايبرويد. حتى لو كان مالتيبل مو سوليتري مو سنجل. Here a conservative approach can be adopted يعني شيء can be managed conservatively يعني مو شرط أنه ننطيها دواء. مجرد شيء كان شيء should be followed up to establish the growth rate of the fibroids خاصة if she is asymptomatic. Okay? زين. How frequent the follow up should be arranged at an interval of six up to twelve months period. يعني نقولها روحي وتعالي كل ست شهور تقولكم دكتورة أنا بيتي بعيد بتلفات الدنيا نقولها أوكي روحي وتعالي كل سنة فإذا كل ستة إلى اثنا عشر شهر she should be Uh, followed up for, its, for the growth of the fibroid by a clinical examination, of course, and ultrasound investigation. The other treatment option is the medical ones. Medical treatment. يعني إذا تجي المريضة تقول دكتورة أنا عندي bleeding. أنا عندي pressure effect. أنا عندي dysmenorrhea. خلونا نقولها روحي ومجرد نتابع الـ growth rate مالته. لا نقولها أكو options of treatment. واحدة من عدها هي الميديكال ميديكال اوبشنز وخلوا ببالكم انه all the medical options for treatment will not provide شنو a chance for eradication of the fibroids يعني it will not provide a cure for the fibroids لكن it will provide symptomatic relief فاذا الميديكال treatment of uterine fibroids Uh, will be just for the sake of relief of symptoms. And you have to know that the most established medical option releasing hormone agonist. زين هذا مثل ما تعرفون هو agonist يؤدي إلى initial flare up of the pituitary gonadotropins لكن بعد ما تشبع receptors راح يؤدي إلى 
الى داون ريجوليشن اوف ذا بيتويتري هرمونز زين بما انه راح يؤدي الى داون ريجوليشن اوف ذا بيتويتري هرمونز راح يؤدي الى شنو سبريشن اوف ذا اوفارين فانكشن زين فاذا راح يخلق يخلق لنا ستيت مال شنو كانه هي ان بوست مينوبوزال بيريد لان راح يؤدي الى سبريشن اوف اوفارين فانكشن لذلك بديهية الشغلة إنه المرة إيش راح تشتكي؟ راح تشترك تشتكي من post menopausal side effects اللي هي شنو؟ hot flashes مثلا mood disturbances whatever etc. كذلك إذا ال treatment is prolonged أكثر من سنة ممكن تؤدي إلى osteoporotic changes لذلك ال treatment this treatment with gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist واللي يعطيكم واحدة من الأمثلة مالتها اللي هي مثلا الزولاديكس should not be or is not licensed for more than one year عادة ينطوه ست شهور maximum of one year لكن إذا طولنا أكثر من ست شهور لازم نبدي ويا شنو ننطي الـ HRT اللي هي الـ Hormone Replacement Therapy أو الـ Adback Therapy زين ليش إحنا دا ننطي إذا أكثر من ست شهور طولنا الـ treatment for maximum of one year ننطي ويا الـ HRT أو الـ add back therapy and other, other يعني kinds of medications or medicines هم؟ دكتور راح تنقلل الـ symptoms مات الـ pause من الـ pause بالضبط أوكي زين هنا المشكلة مالت شنو إنه once the treatment is stop طبعا حقيقة هو الـ shrinkage in the fibroid size will be significant Yeah, it is very effective in shrinking the fibroids. Like in once ovarian function returns, yeah, when the treatment is is stopped, the fibroids will regrow to their previous dimensions. Okay. لذلك هذا it is it will not provide permanent cure. لكن هاي الفائدة المؤقتة بيش نحتاجها؟ أولاً prior to surgery we'll send you a complication. ثانياً in a woman unsuitable for surgery, for example. Uh, those who are, for example, morbidly obese or hypertensive or uh, uncontrolled high, having un uncontrolled medical problem. فهي عدها عدها يعني عراب إحنا ريد مثلاً عالج الأنيميا. فمين وايل نوقف الأبليدين باستخدام هذا التريتمنت. The other medical options هو الماي فيبرستون. ماي فيبرستون مثل ما سامعين لي هو عبارة عن أنتي بروجستر جين. هذا إحنا نستخدمه عادة بالinduced abortion, induced miscarriage. هنا شافوا انه it has been shown to be effective in shrinking fibroids at low dose جرعة قليلة لكنه it is currently unlicensed and not available for this use or for, for, for use it for this purpose ليش؟ لانه it is found to uh, cause endometrial hyperplasia لذلك ابتعدوا عنه لكن خلوا ببالكم بعد ال third medical option هو المارينه the use of marina وكلكم سامعين بالمارينا هو عبارة عن شنو؟ عبارة عن ليفو نور جستريل ريليزينج انترا يوتراين ديفايس يعني لو لب هرموني هذا الاسم المتعارف عليه هنا ايش وقت هذا ممكن نستخدمه as an option for treatment of a woman with fibroid ايش وقت؟ if the fibroid size احنا قلنا طبعا the presence of a fibroids in the uterus يؤدي الى شنو؟ enlargement of the uterine size لكن إذا هذا السايز مو أكثر من 14 ويكس إن سايز يعني آه الحجم أو الأبعاد مالته ممكن نستخدم المارينا كذلك لازم شنو ما عندنا significant distortion of a uterine cavity for example by a seven mucosal fibroids أوكي؟ okay? وواضحة الفكرة ليش؟ هذا هو المارينا مثل ما تشوفوا ال other options available for treatment هي surgical surgical يعني عملية زين What are the surgical options available? First, if the fibroid is a submucosal one, where more than fifty percent of the fibroid is present within the endometrial cavity, meaning more than one half is bulging inside the endometrial cavity, and its size should be less than five centimeter, meaning less than five centimeters. Here. It can be excised hysteroscopically. من خلال the operative hysteroscope. لكن طبعا هاي the procedures carries the complications. لأن تتخيلوا 
uh, that therapeutics uh, instruments are introduced inside, uh, inside the, the uterine cavity and restrict the fibroid tissue. فشو هي الكومبليكيشنز اللي بديهيه اللي ممكن تصير؟ واحده من عندها اليوترين بيرفوريشن. بعد اذا اذا اليوترين بيرفوريتد ممكن تعبر الاله على النير باي جاستنت فيسرا فيسرال تيشو اور فيسرال اورجانز لذلك تؤدي الى فيسرال دامج قد تكون باول قد يكون ادجستنت يوريترز اتسترا اور ات مايت ليد تو اكسسيف بليدنج يعني هيموريج انترا او انسايد يعني ديورينج ذا بروسيجر. Or it might lead to an infection later on, as well. Fluid overload. Yeah, مثل ما تعرفون, the fluid is used to distend the uterine cavity uh, during uh, the procedure. حتى نقدر نسوي uh, therapeutic excision of the uh, fibroids. The other surgical treatment option هو the myomectomy. Myomectomy من اسمها يعني excision of the fibroid itself. مو uterus كله نشيله. لا, فقط the fibroid. هذا it is a preferred option where fertility is required يعني دكتورة تقول أنا أريد أبقي الرحمات أريد أحبل هنا أنا شو ال complications of myomectomy يعني الفايبرويد نفسه نشيله خلوا ببالكم إنه the bed of the fibroid is very vascular لذلك من نشيل الفايبرويد إيش راح يؤدي ممكن يؤدي إلى إلى significant إذا إلى إلى لفت رتينج uncontrollable bleeding وقد يؤدي الى هيستيركتومي اذا هذا البليدنج يعني بيكم انكونترول لذلك هذا الريسك ذو ات از سمول لكن ات از سيجنيفيكانت هاي وحده من الكومبليكيشنز زين هسه انا اقول لكم شلون نقدر نقلل الفاسكولاريتي اوف ذا فايبرويد بحيث نقلل الريسك اوف اوف بليدنج ديورينج ذا بروسيجر اند نقلل الريسك اوف يعني بلاد ترانسفيوجن ذا نيد فور بلاد ترانسفيوجن ايش نستخدم يا دراج يا ميديكيشن قبل بالضبط الاذر ريسك اوف مايومكتومي انه رابشر اوف ذا يوترس رابشر اوف ذا يوترس احنا ماذا ماذا اقصد عليه انسايد ذا بروسيجر اور ذا تايم اوف ذا بروسيجر قصدي انه افتر ذا وومن بيكمز بريجنانت ممكن شو يصير عندنا رابشر اوف ذا يوترس خاصه ديورينج ليبر هذا شو وقت يصير؟ في حالة إنه إحنا صح شلنا الفايبرويد نفسه يعني سوينا المايمكتومي لكن the cavity is breached يعني شنو؟ يعني انفتح الكافيتي مال يوترس وهذا يصير في حالات الانتراميورا المرات لكن طبعا من سبميكوزل تايب اوف فايبرويد زين الاذر سيرجيكال تريتمنت اوبشن از اندوماتريال ابليجن يعني شنو؟ ابليجن يعني نقشط او تقريبا يعني يعني الاندومتريوم سيرجيكال اكسايز اور بليتد فيا ثيرابيوتيك ميثود اور كرايو يعني يعني هواي اكو طرق هسه بعدين نحكيها بمحاضرات اخرى هذا الاندومتريوم ابليجن كان بروفايد سيمتوماتيك ريليف لكن بشرط إذا if the uterine cavity is not too enlarged or distorted by a submucosal fibroid يعني قد يكون a successful option in treating or in providing symptomatic relief for the menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea طبعا the fourth uh, surgical treatment option that is most, the most popular because the most popular one and the most common uh, practiced uh, surgical treatment is by excising the uterus as a whole يعني hysterectomy زين هنا أنا قلنا إنه the use of gonadotrophin releasing hormone agonist pre surgical treatment سواء so myomectomy or hysterectomy over a three months period will reduce the bulk and vascularity of the fibroids therefore blood loss and the likely need for transfusion will be reduced as well هنا أنا المشكلة مع هاي التريتمنت prior to myomectomy شنو هو صح إنه راح يقلل risk of blood loss لكن المشكلة اللي راح تت يعني تظهر عندنا انه there will be a difficulty in removing the, the fibroid tissue is, uh, يعني itself ليش؟ لانه احنا صح من البداية قلنا انه الفايبرويد is very well demarcated from the normal adjacent myometrial tissue لكن من نستخدم هاي التريتمنت ايش راح يصير عندنا؟ 
in our tissue planes between the fibroid and the normal myometrial tissue will be obscure, therefore making the surgery more difficult. I that's what I'm going to And the last option for treatment, well, uterine artery embolization. Min ismha, يعني شنو يعني occlusion of both uterine arteries. Then, it is a minimally invasive radiological technique. That is to mean they are carried out under radiological guidance. مثل ما شوفون بهذا الفجر. إنه both your uterine arteries are occluded. Via an, a particles, yani embolization of both your uterine arteries is done under radiological guidance. Guidance via an incision uh, done in the uh, through the femoral artery. طبعا مثل ما تشوفون إنه إذا ندخل بالleft femoral artery, the right uterine artery will be embolized. يعني the contra the artery on the contralateral side. طبعا this will provide reduction in fibroid. Size and menstrual blood loss by around 50%. This procedure is performed under local anesthesia. يعني ما نحتاج GA. In a post-op, post procedure, the woman will experience severe pain. So, usually and frequently, they require opiate form of analgesia for up to 24 hours following treatment. هذا الفجر يبين قدامكم post embolization uh, fibroid size مثل ما تشوفون فجر A هو pre embolization فجر B هو post واضحة انه size ما تقريبا the reduction in the fibroid size is about uh, 50% إذا هو effective لكن كل procedure بها complications شنو هاي complications؟ The first of all, and the most common complication that is uh, frequently seen post embolization, semi post embolization syndrome. This usually occurs seven up to ten days after the procedure. And to throw the Maria Libya, we go ahead and get the results. Plus, in the ten days, you might experience a flu-like illness and raise what you see come. We will say that you should seek a medical advice. Other like other complications include infection, fever, fibroid expulsion. يعني المريضة تحس طبعا على غفلة أنه there is a mass that is coming out through her genital tract. وتقول دا شوف طلعت من عندي فد عقدة أو جغدة فهذا هو fibroid expulsion. كذلك this procedure carries the risk of potential ovarian failure. زين أحد يقول لي ليش يصير عندها potential ovarian failure? يعني هي يكون عندها تكون at risk of ovarian premature ovarian failure دكتور يعني إذا طولت العملية لأنه ال blood supply يقل هي مو طاولة هو إحنا already العملية لها time محدد لكنه مثل ما أنت قلت ال blood supply to the ovaries راح يقل لأنه ال uterine both uterine arteries will be occluded فراح يعتمد فقط على ال gonadal vessels فأكيد طبعا when the blood supply to any organ is affected or impaired راح يؤدي إلى إلى failure of this organ later on. Okay. عندكم سؤال عن المحاضرة؟ دكتورة بخصوص ال cervical. نعم. إذا كانت يعني أنه large in size ممكن نسوي complete blockage؟ 